In this video, we're looking at factoring binomials, specifically some of the more common binomial patterns that you will encounter. We're going to start with this binomial, x squared minus 16. So we're talking about polynomials that have two terms. The first thing we're going to do is try to use some of the ideas that we've already discussed with factoring and see how we can apply them to this binomial. So the most common trinomials we're seeing start with a term that has x squared. We have a middle term with a regular x that we don't see in this case, and then it ends with a constant. So I'm almost thinking like I have a space here where I would usually see a term that has just a regular x that we don't have in this binomial. We're going to put in a placeholder for that missing term, a 0x. So now it looks like a trinomial where our first term is just an x squared. And so when we see three terms and our first term is x squared, we think about a pair of numbers that multiply together is going to equal negative 16. And added together will equal the middle number. Since we had a missing term there, we're thinking that added together these numbers should equal 0. So it's going to be the same number, just one positive and one negative. So they cancel each other out. When they add, it equals 0. And so we would take those numbers and drop them into our answer. Remember, that's what we do when our leading term is just an x squared. We don't have a 2, a 3, or any higher number on the x squared. We can take those numbers and just drop them right in. And there's our answer, x plus 4 times x minus 4. So our old strategies still work, but there's maybe a different way you could choose to do because of how straightforward these, this pattern is for what we're calling a difference of squares. We have two terms. We can see that each term, this term, the x squared, as well as the last term, the 25, they are both squares. We can th see those as something times itself. So to factor these, I'm even setting up some boxes where I'm asking myself, what to the second power would equal that first term x squared? And it's just going to be a regular x. What would I need to have in this box? What number to the second power would equal 25? And it's going to be 5. Once we have those boxes filled in, we are right at our answer. We set up two sets of parentheses, and each set of parentheses starts with the x and ends with the 5. And what's left are the signs. 1 gets a plus and 1 gets a minus. And, and there it is factored. So this is a, a way that I like. And it's close to a way that we'll use for factoring cube patterns. And those are a little bit trickier. So I'm just going to get you started with this sort of a strategy. And then we'll use it with cube patterns also. x squared plus 49. Now let's go back to thinking of it as three terms. So we have a 0x for our missing term, but this is a positive 49. So when we think of a pair of numbers, we're saying multiplied together this pair of numbers should equal a positive 49, and added together it should equal 0. But if the product, if multiplied together it equals a positive, then the numbers are either both positive or both negative. And either way, they're not going to add up to equal 0. So that pair of numbers that multiply together equals positive anything, any positive number, and add it together equals 0, they're not real numbers. So x squared plus 49 cannot be factored. And you might end up calling that a prime binomial. It cannot be factored. When it's, this, when it's the squares binomial where each term is a square, if there's a subtract, that we can factor. So we're looking at the sign in between these two terms. If it's an add, it cannot be factored. It doesn't matter whether this is a 49 or a 1 or a 25. An add cannot be factored. A subtract can be factored. So we're, what we're going to do, we're going to set up these boxes with exponents of 2 on the outside. And think about what should go into this box, something to the second power to equal x squared. It's just a regular x. And in the second box, a 7 to the second power to equal that 49. And once we have the x and the 7 filled in, we know both sets of parentheses get the x and the 7. One set gets a plus, one set gets a minus. Here's our next example, and let's start to talk about our approach for factoring binomials. Again, different polynomials have different ways of factoring, so we need to first just look at what it is that we're dealing with, because 
this is how we know how to factor it. And the clues that we're looking for are that this is a polynomial that has two terms. And each of these terms, if we investigate just a little bit, we can see that they are squares. I definitely see an x squared here, and I definitely see a y squared here. Now, if, if I think about the numbers, 4 is a 2 squared, 2 times 2. And here is a 9 times 9. So each term is a square. So what we want to do, set up these blank boxes with exponents of 2 on the outside and carefully figure out what term do we need in each of these boxes. So in the first box, we need to see a term. This term to the second power should equal 4x squared. So think of the number part first. What number to the second power is 4? We'll use 2. And x to what power should give us x squared? Well, that's going to be regular x. So the first box has 2x. In the second box, the number to the second power to equal 81 is 9. And y to the second power will take us to y squared. So inside the box, we need just one y. Once we have those boxes filled in, we can go right to the sets of parentheses. Each set is going to start with 2x, which is in our first box. Each set of parentheses is going to end with 9y. 1 will get a plus, 1 will get a minus, and it's factored. Now, just like any other factoring problem, we can check our answer using FOIL method. Let's use that same approach on this problem. We see a polynomial. It has two terms. They perhaps appear to be squares. Each term appears to be a square. We know that 16 is 4 squared and the 9 is 3 squared, but we're not seeing exponents of 2. But they still really are squares. They can be considered squares if the exponent is an even number. So often we're going to see a 2, but if you see 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, you can use these same steps for factoring a difference of squares, as long as the exponent is an even number. So we're going to set up the boxes. S number to the second power to equal 16, that's going to be the 4. Now let's think about what we need to have in terms of the x inside parentheses. We know that just an x inside this box is not going to work. That's x to the second power would give us x squared, but we need x to the fourth. So we need an x with some higher exponent. And just remember that an exponent outside of parentheses gets multiplied to the exponents inside. So the exponent we need in parentheses, this 2 times what equals 4, we need another 2. So it's 4x squared is this term in the first box. 4x squared to the second power would equal 16x to the fourth. What about in the second box? It's going to be a 3 for the coefficient, and we're going to need y. And what exponent will we need on the y? The exponent times 2 is going to equal that exponent 10. So we need y to the fifth. So just be cautious when we have higher exponents, and you can think about that shortcut for sure. Those exponents multiplied together should equal the exponent we see up top. Once we have those boxes filled in, it's going to be straightforward. Set up two sets of parentheses. Each set of parentheses will start with the 4x squared. Each set of parentheses will end with a 3y to the fifth. One gets a plus, one gets a minus, and there it's factored. Just like all these other problems, if you do FOIL method, you might have to do it a little bit carefully with all these x's and y's, but do FOIL method, combine like terms, you're going to see your outer and inner terms cancel. Your first 4x squared times 4x squared is your 16x to the fourth. And 3y to the fifth times negative 3y to the fifth will give you the negative 9y to the tenth. And your outer and inner terms will cancel. Maybe you should take a minute and just pause the video. It's good practice. Multiply this one out, do FOIL method, and, and see that we do come up with 16x to the fourth minus 9y to the tenth.